And here we are back again playing Green Line Chechnya. Uh, we're going to be at the start of game turn two with the Russian uh, um, random events phase. I seem to have, I need to make a correction, I seem to have overlooked the resistance player's random events phase. So we'll resolve that first. Uh, my luck, it probably would have changed uh, the whole resistance player's turn, but we'll see. So, we're going to roll two dice, one for the resistance, one for the Russian. The resistance will be uh, times ten. Let's double check here. Multiplied by ten and then add the Russian die. So, Russian die is always going to be black. Uh, let's see, we have twenty-three. And 23 on the random events table is... Aha! This is what the uh, Chetnian player would have had during his turn. Uh, if I can see it there. UN ceasefire proposal. Each side uh, secretly writes down whether it will comply, yes, or refuse, no. And they reveal the results simultaneously. If both sides say yes, the game ends and victory is determined. If both sides say no, nothing further happens. If Russia says, if Russia alone says no, add 10 points to the political index. If the resistance player says no, subtract 10 points from the political index. So we would have had a possible ceasefire last turn. Um, so I need to go ahead and decide what each player is going to do, whether they'll accept it or not and we'll proceed from there. I think just for um, the sake of sake of gameplay we're going to go ahead and say that both sides say no to the ceasefire and thus nothing happens. So now we will roll for the actual Russian players uh, random events for game turn two. We have 26. Let's see what that does. Oh, we have Russian anti-war protests. Where are they at? 26. We double the points added to the political index for moving Russian, Russian units from the forces available to the ready box. Eh, that's not good because I intended to move uh, some air power. Air power uh, from the forces available to the ready box this turn so that is going to that's going to hurt if I do that because that was going to cost me 12 points on top of the 20 on top of the 30 no I lost count here let me see that's 30 yeah had 28, 12, I'm at 40. So we are at 40 right now if I buy the aircraft that I want to. Uh, going to the Russian reinforcement phase. I do want to bring in the aircraft, but that's going to be at 24 points, and that's really going to push me pretty high on the political point track. And I don't know if I can afford that this turn. So I think I'm going to wait. I won't bring in the air power this turn. The anti-war protests are just too strong and we don't want to raise the political index any higher than it is already at 40. So when I come back we will go to the Russian players movement phase. For the Russian players movement phase I think I'm going to go ahead and maneuver these units up and around here and try to start uh, pressing in on Grozny while this division of units is going to try and just brush aside that militia unit and we'll kind of see what happens. I do have in reserve uh, an airmobile Focus or not. An 
airmobile uh, unit. It's not going to focus because I've got the whole screen there of the background. So anyway, I can use him to go pretty much anywhere on the map. So we're just going to hold him in reserve at the moment. And then from the other side, from the southern region, we're going to bring this division up and start fighting our way through the militia there using the security troops to uh, help surround units with zones of control and hopefully force their elimination due to a lack of being able to retreat. Um, let's see, what else? This is going to be a before the Russians move picture. And then I'll come back with an after they're mo they've moved uh, picture. Here we are at the end of the Russian movement phase, getting ready for the Russian combat phase. Um, I've rotated the Russian units which moved to sh indicate the, that they have moved. And that I don't forget which ones I moved. Um, we're going to declare attacks. I don't have to declare them beforehand, but we're going to attack this unit. I don't know what the odds are yet. We'll just figure that out here in a minute. And we're going to attack this unit. Um, So we'll see what happens there. I have no air to add, so it's going to be a, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, in the first attack on the right hand side of the screen, this attack here, it's going to be on the 7 to 1 column, which is the highest column that you can get in combat. We are going to use the mobile combat table because the defender is in clear terrain. He's just got a oil facility that he's trying to protect, but it has no effect on combat. So, with that in mind, we're going to come down here to the mobile table. And on the 7 to 1 column, we would get shifts for the headquarters. Um, however, there are there's no higher odds than uh, seven to one so and there's no nothing would take us down below seven to one so we will roll one die here on the seven to one column and see what happens we roll a two that is a defender retreat and we come down here where the combat results explanations are D means that the defender is affected, and R, all units retreat one hex, or one effective unit is reduced, or one reduced unit is eliminated, owner's choice of option and unit. Opponent may advance into hex if vacated. I would have liked to have gotten a breakthrough, which would have been a B, uh, up there at the top on the mobile table, but uh, no such luck. So we will uh, see about uh, the options this unit has. Uh, it can't retreat without entering an enemy zone of control, so it will automatically be reduced. All units retreat one hex, or one effective unit is reduced, or one reduced unit is eliminated. I guess I could stay in the hex and just uh, reduce it. So that might be an option. Let's see what these militia units have. Oh, they go down to a one. But it can't retreat without being reduced. So either way it's going to be reduced. We'll just go ahead and reduce that unit. And leave it in the hex. Because it looks like it's an optional thing. So. It's reduced and the Russian attack is over. So all that strength brought to bear and very little to show for it. However, we still have one other attack which may bear uh, uh, bear fruit and that's going to be the attack against this unit. I'm going to go ahead and calculate the 
combat strength and determine the odds and when I come back we'll uh, roll the die and see what happens okay this combat is also going to be resolved seven to one however we are going to use the assault table the attack is being made into rough terrain so I cannot use the mobile table so we're just going to go for an all-out assault at seven to one um, on a three, four, five, or six, we'll eliminate the unit outright. On a two, we'll reduce it. And on a one, we're going to be like an exchange. So we really don't want a one. So, headquarters, nothing else can really add anything. I'm glad I didn't bring the aircraft because that would have been a, that would have been a mistake. So, we are going to go ahead and roll a die on the seven to one table on the assault table. Roll six, defender eliminated. There. There's the die roll and the assault table. There you can roll a six. At seven to one, so defender eliminated. That will allow us to advance. So let's get rid of this militia unit. I'll find out what to do with him in a minute. I think he goes just back into the pool for the resistance player. I need to see if I can advance all or just one unit. Looks like any or all units which precipita uh, participated in the attack can advance into the hex, either attacker or defender. So we will go ahead and move... Uh, the 266th division into the oil facility here and capturing it and gaining our first uh, victory points of the game for the Russians uh, they might have got something for the reduced militia unit or eliminated one but I'm not sure at the moment but anyway uh, first blood goes to the Russians and when I return, we will proceed to the resist uh, logistics phase. Wait a minute, hold on. Um, I think everybody's within three hexes of a road or on a road, which leads back to a supply source in Russia. Or I think you can also do it. Russian units in a city inside Russia. Uh, the tactical path, Russian supply, a unit belonging to Russia is supplied if it's in one of the following situations. It traces a tactical path of three hexes or fewer in length to a hex that is part of a regular supply line reaching back to a Russian controlled city, the north map edge or the west map edge. So a Russian controlled city would be even in Chetnya. Chechnya, Chechnya, so Chechnya, that's it. So I believe all the Russian units are in supply and can trace the supply line back to a supply source. So we will proceed on with the resistance players random events phase. All right, we're back. Turn two, resistance players random events phase or segment. I'm gonna roll two dice. We're gonna add take. Uh, resistance players roll times 10 and we'll add the Soviet players die roll to that total. Let's see, black is always going to be the Soviets, so we have resistance players 4 times 10 is 40 and we'll add 4, that'll be 44. And I don't think there's any events that, uh, nope, nothing's anything. 41 and higher, there's no event, so nothing happens. We will proceed with the resistance players reinforcement phase after this. Okay, we're back with the resistance reinforcement segment. We're going to roll a die, cross reference that with the political index, and see what kind, if any, reinforcements. Res resistance player gets. We roll a 1, which once again is none. 
So we will proceed with the resistance player's movement segment. Alrighty, well, since the resistance player received no reinforcements this segment, um, I don't really see much need to move any of their units. They're probably positioned about the best they can be at the moment. Um, however, never having played this game before, I really have no clue. Um, so I think they're also going to decline combat. I see no value in attacking. Um, the resistance player, obviously, <clears throat> at least in this semi-historical scenario, well, it says it's historical, um, doesn't look like they have uh, much of a chance at the moment, so we'll see if they can get some reinforcements. Perhaps that'll uh, change things a little bit, but with three Russian divisions or so um, <clears throat> participating in the invasion, I don't see how the resistance player can really stand up against that, but I guess we'll find out. So, um, the political point index is going to be what <clears throat> makes the difference, I suppose, because the resistance player gets one victory point per political uh, index point. And right now it stands at 28, so... Um, in comparison, if the Russians capture any hex of Grozny, they get 15 points so of uh, victory points. So, or is it 20? Yeah, it's 20. So, I guess if uh, resistance can put up more of a fight, they'll force the Russian player to <clears throat> increase the political index by bringing in new reinforcements. So, I think we will probably proceed on to the Russian player turn 3 right after this. Just a thought, um, I was talking about how I don't think the resistance player has much of a chance against the full might of the Russian player, especially if he brings in uh, a lot of units into the ready box, even dis and despite the fact that that's going to cost him political points uh, on the political index. The resistance player does have a higher recovery or cohesion rating than the Soviet player does, for the most part. Um, three versus a two, so they have a 50% chance during a recovery phase of uh, flipping a reduced unit back over to its effective side. Soviet player, on the other hand, only has about a 33% chance of uh, doing the same, so um, I guess their cohesion is a little better on the resistance players side so that may be a telling factor but we'll see it looks like I have one unit in fact I don't think I tried to recover that unit on turn two so let's go ahead and try to recover that unit well I can't because he's not in supply Can you recover a unit in supply out of supply I mean Let's see. After checking supply in the friendly logistics and recovery segment, a side may attempt to restore reduced units that are in supply to their effective status. So now the um, Russian zones of control here and here prohibit it from uh, attempting to recover. So never mind. Another thought. Um, If, uh, at least in this scenario, the Russians don't need to bring in a lot of extra units, thereby raising the political index. Um, I mean, you know, I haven't made any major attacks yet on the on Grozny and the resistance, you know, heavier units. They only have, well, it looks to me like they have few more units they uh, can get if they can get the uh, 
die roll to bring them in, the resistance player that is. So we've got a couple of good units here, and then they've got these infantry units here as part of their main force. Um, not counting the Patriot units and the militia units. So if the Russian player is forced to, you know, fight those units, then he will probably most likely have to bring on uh, some more units from the forces available box. However, um, it looks like most mech units have a low recovery uh, cohesion, that is. I don't want to call it a recovery rate, but it's a cohesion factor. Because even the resistance player's mech units are only at two. Matching the Soviet mech units cohesion rating of a two, so... I guess that represents the the more difficult terrain and the more casualties and harder it will be to replace those casualties in a mountainous environment. So that's my guess. Anyway, um, we will proceed to turn three, the Russian random event phase, after this.